Um, okay, so today I'm going to be doing an example on a polytropic process and uh, it, it's going to be based off of um, chapter 4 problem 120. And this is going to be probably the first example I do with a polytropic process and take note that this one is going to be probably the toughest one in the chapter that has to do with a polytropic process. So, this problem, we have basically some nitrogen in a piston cylinder device, and it's expanding. Um, for this problem, they want us to find the work and the heat produced. And for state 1, we have a pressure and temperature. For state 2, we have a pressure of 200 kPa, and they give us this N value. And so... Um, I, I took the liberty of getting this R in CV value. Um, the CV value was taken from the book at room temp. Um, I know it's usually better to take, if you were um, assuming constant specific heats, it's better to take this at the average temperature, right, where you go T1 plus T2 divided by 2. But um, as you can see, I don't have a T2, and that would make things kind of rough, as this problem is already rough. So I'm going to assume CV at room temp. Okay, so to start off this problem, as always, we do a... We see that this piston is closed, so I'll draw the started line and say, hey, I'm going to be looking at the energy interactions within this dotted line, and say this is a closed system. Okay? And so now we have to assume some things. Well, we know this is a closed system. And as I said before, this is a polytropic process. And we also have some N2 going through there. So we have this N2, so we can assume it's basically an ideal gas. Sorry if you can't really see this. And then, well, we don't have any kinetic or potential energies. This is stationary. And as I said before, I used this CV at room temp. And so I'm assuming two things. This is a constant specific heat. And um, CV at room temp. Okay, so now we can start the problem. Well, the first thing you do, as I always say, is to use the energy balance. This is a closed system, so we're going to have to use the closed system energy balance. All right, that's written as En, notice no dots, minus E out, equals change E of the system. We write in all the ends, Q in plus work in minus Q out minus work out equals change in U plus change in KE plus change in PE. Okay, it's kind of close here. So, um, just going through the assumptions, it's a closed system, so m.1 is equal to m.2. Um, you might even look at this and be like, whoa, 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 there's no way I can find the mass. And you'd be correct. So, it probably would be a good assumption to say that this is going to be in a... You, you should say answer... in kilojoules per kilogram. Right? We're going to assume that this is in a per unit mass form. And so um, we have a closed system. This is an ideal gas. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Stationary, so Ke and Pe are gone. Um, and so here it says heat produced. So that should tip you off that we might we have some Q in. Right? So there's no Q out. And we, we see this is an expansion process as this piston is moving up. So piston moves out, 
work of the boundary out. Right? So then we hit work of the boundary out. So you're left with Q in minus work of the boundary out is equal to change in U, right? And one more thing. We have this constant specific heat and this an ideal gas. When we have these two conditions, we can change this delta U. So then in total, we can say that Qn is equal to M times Cv delta T, T2 minus T1 plus work of the boundary out. And as I said before, we can't find this mass. So what are we going to have to do? Well, that just basically means that we're going to have to take some measures here. And, and those measures are that we're going to get rid of the mass. So what we're going to do is divide this whole thing by mass. So I'll just go like this. Right. And get rid of the mass. So we're going to be dealing with little q's and little, well, just little subscripts here. Q in is equal to CV T2 minus T1 work of the boundary out is plus little work of the boundary out. Okay, so then we're left with this ideal gas equation. Now, the next part, it says find the work produced. So the work produced is this work of the boundary out. How are we going to do that? Well, we know for, in, in order to do that, we would have to talk about a little about what that even means. So work is basically the area under a PV diagram. So this is, for example, um, we have a process where the pressure is constant from one to two. If we were to take this area under here, we would be able to find the work of the boundary. So in this case, the work of the boundary for a constant pressure process would be P V2 minus V1. And a polytropic process looks like this. It's kind of a, for this case, it's kind of a line that moves up here in kind of a swoopy motion. And we have to find area here. Well, you'll see that we have the work of the boundary here for a polytropic process taken right from the textbook is P2 times V2 minus P1 times V1 over one minus N. Right? And so this is the equation that we're going to use. But notice, this is capital W, if, if you didn't see that. So somewhere around here, we're not, we should take out mass, but we don't know where yet, right? Because we want it in per unit mass form because we can't even find mass. So let's see how that's done. So as we said before, we have to find this work of the boundary out. And so this work of the boundary out is equal to P2 times V2 minus P1 times V1 all over 1 minus N. Right. And so then having that, we have to kind of do we, we, we have this pressure, this pressure one, we have this N, but we don't have volume or volume one. Right. And most of the times that this leads to a problem because we, we don't know what we're going to use. And in fact, what you're going to sooner or later or sooner realize it, is that you need the ideal gas equation and that's what we're going to be using here over and over again right so we know that pv equals m r t right and we don't know this volume so we want to get rid of it so what we're going to do is arrange this so we get rid of the volume, right? So what you should end up with here is we're going to take, <clears throat> we're going to arrange this formula into P, into uh, P2, just for this part here 
is equal to mr t2 over v2, right? And we'll do the same with this. It's just p1 equals mr t1 over v1, right? And so you'll get something that looks like this here really quick. M R T1 over V2 times V2 minus M, sorry, this was 2, M R T1 V1 times V1 over 1 minus N. And so what happens is this cancels out and this cancels out this cancels out and this cancels out and now you can see that we actually have the mass so as I said before this is a capital WB out and we need it small because there's no way we can find the mass so rearranging that well then I'll just get rid of the masses right? and you're left with R T2 minus T1 all over 1 minus N and so this is how we find the work of the boundary out we have this R, we can find it in the book, we have this N, we have this T1, but now we need to find this T2. So I'm just going to end the video right there, and um, I'll do a second part to this video, and I'll upload it later. Alright, thanks.